Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. We are having a very, very exciting fall season. And today, I am really looking forward to introducing you to someone who is very special to me and very special, I think, to many people in a lot of ways. She is a multi-talented person. But what I'm most excited about is... You know how in this fall season we've been talking about, we've all been through a lot of stuff in the last year and a half, and it's still going on kind of big time, isn't it? And I think one of the most important things we can all strive for, and one of the most important things we have to find within ourselves is resiliency. And that resiliency is what not only can get us through, but can help us like savor the best of the experience that we're having and take it to its highest levels to be of real value in our lives. And my guest today, Amy Scruggs, is an absolute picture of resiliency. But before we bring Amy on, let me just remind you that I am Paula Shaw. I am a life transition coach. So dealing with people, helping people who are going through change is the core of the work that I do. Because change is going to come whether we like it or not. And, but oftentimes it's unwelcome. And when it's unwelcome change, whether that be a death a divorce, a health challenge, so many of those kinds of changes are not the changes that we really want in our lives. And we need some help with dealing with those. We need uh, to not be, or at least feel like we're in it alone. And oftentimes we do need to reach out to someone, whether it's a friend or it's a professional. And that's the work that I do. I am also the author of this book, Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End?, which I know is how so many people feel when they are going through a loss experience. I'm the author of Chakras, The Magnificent Seven, which I don't have a copy of with me today, but also my latest book, which is one of my faves, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. Because I think that's a plight that so many of us go through. And unfortunately, it affects those we love. Because we don't show up. We don't go by and see them. We don't call because we're afraid that we might say something that will make it all worse. We're afraid that somehow something we do will impact those that we love and those that are hurting in a negative way. So saying the right thing when you don't know what to say is a great little book that I think everyone needs to read so that you just have a comfort level when you have friends that are going through challenges or um, colleagues or even employees that are going through challenges. We all want to know how to support. We want to be able to comfort and support in a very real way. So that little book can be such a help. And by the way, if you go to my website, paulashaw.com, you can get a complimentary cheat sheet, I call it. It's called 20 Things to Say and Not to Say to People in Pain. And that is a free gift for me. And it's at the actual sentences, 20 that are good to say and helpful to say, and 20 that you really want to avoid if you're going to have a successful conversation with someone who's hurting. So that's paulashaw.com. And also, if you want to learn more about this show or get information about being a guest or sponsor of this show, please go to changeituprradio.com. All right, now, without any further ado, I want to introduce you to someone who really is an amazing example of resiliency. 
Her name is Amy Scruggs. She is the voice and face of Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. She's the current host for the national TV show Financing the American Dream on CNBC. Her past hosting credits include the parent TV show The American Dream, Lifestyle San Diego, and The Retiring Right Show. For over 20 years, she has been in media as a TV host, recording artist, public speaker, corporate spokesperson, and business executive. And she's used all this experience to now create a coaching practice where she teaches executives and just everyday folks and people like me how to do better when you're whether you're working on Zoom or in person we all need to know how to present ourselves in the best possible way and she's created a new book called Lights Camera Action which gives so many great tips it is such a wonderful book for people even if you're just doing webinars for your corporation you know even if or if you're going on podcasts and that sort of thing you want to put your best foot forward and you want to present yourself in the best way and we've all been on too many zoom meetings in the last year and a half where we've seen people with the cameras positioned so that we're either looking up their noses or watching the ceiling fan <laughs> on the roof or something that isn't really getting to see them in their best possible way. So Amy's book, Lights, Camera, Action, helps with that, and we'll be talking more with her about, in, about that in just a few minutes. She's also a wonderful singer, began as a con in country music, and she has opened for some of the greats like Trace Atkins, Clint Black, Charlie Daniels, and many others. So without any further ado, Ms. Amy Scruggs, please join me. Thank you, Thank Paula. You. That was, that's exhausting. I'm just Amy. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, but hey, when you've lived a long time and you've lived well and you've got all those credentials, Flout them, flaunt them, I mean, is the word I wanted, flaunt them. I think maybe Mercury's in retrograde. Words are starting to be a little harder to come up with. I'm not sure if we're quite there yet, but I know it's coming. <laughs> so, my dear, and may I also say to all of you that Amy is not just my guest today. She is a dear friend and just a joy in my life. And we just spent an amazing evening together the other yeah. evening at the mainly Mozart concert, which I have to say was truly one of the most magical evenings of my life. Can't recommend it highly enough. And we will be having Nancy Letourneau, who is the head of mainly Mozart. She will be a guest on this show very soon. So be sure to keep a watch out for that. So Ms. Amy, Life in the last year and a half for all of us has been tricky mm -hmm. it, at best, right? For many, right. it's been devastating. For some, it has been fraught with moments of um, anxiety and depression and just feeling so alone and useless and hopeless. And I feel that without resiliency, these kinds of experiences can be really tough for people, mm -hmm. even though things are opening up on, in, on many levels, you know, like that concert we were at the other night wouldn't have happened amazing. last year. Right. And yet, I think the so many people feel so lost when hard times come. And I know your story. I know that your life has not been easy, even though you're experiencing some lovely successes now. So would you give our listeners a little bit of a backstory of from whence you come, my dear? Thank you, Paula. And yes, it was absolutely wonderful to be back out in a concert setting like that. And I think what this last year and a half has done is teach us to appreciate those moments that maybe we would have taken it for granted. And, mm -hmm. and having different moments come back and 
live events or anything that we can and feel safe doing is is really a treasure. And as you read the bio or my background experience and realizing the, the magnitude of what we're talking about today and resiliency and, and what you go through, my resume or my background is just a complete reflection of how many times I've had to be resilient and shift each new mm -hmm. thing that she says, well, she's, she's been a TV host or a business executive and, and, you know, recording new albums is all a direct result of shifting when life hits you with something that you don't know it's going to hit you with. And what it's done is create tremendous opportunities for new growth and tremendous opportunities for some of the bucket list items that I had that I never would have dreamed mm -hmm. come yes. true. And starting back to being 18 years old and having my first child, that's a shift. Oh boy. You, that's creating resilience at a time that I was still a kid. I was fresh mm -hmm. out of high school mm. and here I have a son and I've got to figure this out and, and forge my way through and keep a roof over his head and provide for him. And I went on to marry young then and have more children that by the time I was 30, I had, how old was I? I had three kids by the time I was 26 Ooh. and I added the fourth one by 31. So I had a boatload of kids and there was constant shifting in that. Mm -hmm. At 29, I realized I need to really start my career and help support all of these kids yeah. <laughs> and had to step into, into figuring out what that was going to look like. I was young. I hadn't gone to college. I hadn't had a chance to really figure out what all of my skill sets were. Although mm -hmm. I knew I was a great talker <laughs> I <knew laughs> okay. that I had energy and that I loved to be in front of people. I mean, even in high school, my notes were always, she talks too much. And I was in all the music classes. So the writing was on the wall that I needed to go that direction. And I was very <laughs> grateful to have an amazing woman who also so had shifted and gone through resiliency. She was a cancer survivor, single mom of three oh, wow. was in the mortgage industry. And I was able to get an interview with her and she took a chance on me with no experience at 29 years old and said, I'm, I'm going to mm. put my time into you. And she, there was wow. that connection there because we were both kind of survivors and fighters. Mm -hmm. And she was incredible. Liz taught me what I needed to know and got me the tools and the resources to set me out for success, which made me want to, to repay her. And the way I could repay her was by finding that success, by going and selling and doing a great job and giving her yes. my best work ethic and being excited about the work that I do, learning all that I could, not taking for granted the position that she gave me in that corporate world to go out in, in wholesale mortgage at a time that the industry was really booming. This is 2001, 2002, 2003. Mm -hmm. The industry was, was nuts and it was highly competitive. I'm in LA and Orange County, California, and it was highly competitive. But I was so thankful for her believing in me. And here was a woman who had resilience that I was able to go out and start forging my way through in that. Yes. And then we ended up going different directions at different companies, but stayed very close as opportunities arose for both of us. We continued to support each other in those things that came together. 2007, at the beginning of the year, I kicked off having to have a major surgery because mm. um, my insides were mangled mess from four C-sections oh, and history. And so they had to do a complete hysterectomy because I was in pretty bad shape with tumors. And so here I was having to go through a major transition, major surgery that was dangerous and scary. And at the exact same time, the entire mortgage and real estate industry collapsed with the recession. Oh, dear. So I came out of that recovery to a lot of grueling uh, health wise of what I had to do to get back on my feet. But I also mm. came back to no job. The wholesale end was the first to be gone. Oh my. So I had this, I had this new presentation in front of me of it's time to shift again. Mm -hmm. During the time when I was doing well and working in mortgage, I was always singing. I was always performing in local bands. I was out in street fairs and concerts and I was in a, in a, in a local group, but I'd also had a chance to go to Nashville and be discovered and start working on some of my recordings in Nashville during those few years. Oh. So what I did in that shift time when 07 hit and I recovered, I said, well, it's time to take the sales skills and the resilience skills and the shifting skills that Liz had taught me and that I had done in mortgage and put it into my music career that I had always dreamed of. Mm. I had nothing to lose. Go out <laughs> That's and ask. Point. And right. sometimes what? that's the place from which we really take off, right? Yes. When we, we're so down and out, there's nothing to lose. So why not? 
Why? Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt. Why? There's yeah. nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Who cares if they say no? What if somebody says yes? Yes. And I put right. that same excitement and mm -hmm. put my marketing package together. Six months later, I was able to open for Clint Black in Arizona on the 4th of July show on a major national stage. Oh my gosh. Just by going out and asking for it mm. without the fear of the no. That is huge. That statement right there, asking for it without the fear of the no. Our fear so often holds us back from even giving ourselves a shot. Yes. I love that statement. I really it, love that statement. It started, you know, yes, it started from ahead. not realizing that I, I, to myself, like, wow, I could have missed this. Had I let the fear, mm. I could have missed this. Sorry, yes. please continue. No, I was just going to say, it's interesting to me that hard times come and some people kind of shut down and, and even get paralyzed. You know, they just freeze in place. Mm -hmm. Other people get up and start creating. What do you think makes that difference in people? I think it's the fear. I really do believe it's that negative self-talk that mm -hmm. nobody will like it. There's no way it can happen. That inside that says, who do you think you are? The imposter syndrome is a big right. deal. People right. feel that no way. If they really find out though who I am or they don't like what I do, people are afraid of putting it out there. Yeah. And so it holds back because we put these, we have to fit into a certain box. Mm -hmm. And the minute you start thinking outside the box, you're going, well, why not? Why not go and ask to open for Clint Black? Why not? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And there was a, I booked an entire tour the following year. I booked an entire U.S. tour without having a band put together yet. Oh. <laughs> but why not? I'm like, well, if you build it, they will come. They'll figure it out. They'll figure and it we, out. We figured it out. And amazing things happened and amazing people came onto the team and we lost some halfway through and brought some others in. And I spent half a tour. I, I had, we had some things happened on the tour that was really difficult. And I had to lay two guys off in the middle of the tour mm. and we finished the rest of it acoustic. And I remember hearing, well, you can't do that. They, they hired you for a full band. But when I get there and say, Hey, but you have us and we're going to make it great. What do you have to lose? And they let us perform and we did our best and the crowd loved it. So just adapting and shifting, realizing that that fear, I could have canceled those shows because I was so afraid that I was mm -hmm. out of contract. Mm -hmm. We showed up and owned it. Like, oh, is there someone missing? I didn't notice. What? No, it's not just here. This is a full band. You didn't notice? And just taking that confidence. And I did that tour with my kids in tow. We went mm -hmm. out and did it in the time of a major recession where I didn't have the mortgage mm -hmm. industry and sales to fall back on. Mm -hmm. We went out and did it and opened for some of the biggest names in music during that time because we kept asking for the business and booking it. Sometimes you have to put that out there and believe yes. it. So let me ask you a question, Amy. Do you think that having done that and, and had those kinds of experiences in the past, did that help you when something came along a, a year and a half ago that nobody on the planet had ever experienced? A yeah. worldwide pandemic? You know, I actually said, oh, Lordy, I've lived this chapter. This is time to triage. I'm just shift. I saw so many colleagues who maybe in other industries who hadn't had their industry wiped out yet. So you, mm -hmm. we, this time uh, our industry didn't get wiped out. Real estate and mortgage did very well. Cause fast forwarding now I am back in that world as far as a spokesperson and a media personality and right. coaching loan officers. So I still speak the language and I'm in that world with a lot of real estate professionals that are my private clients. Mm -hmm. But I saw, wait a minute, this might hold up and this might actually be an opportunity for me to help more people mm. and but for me it was i've lived this chapter if it doesn't i'm gonna mm. shift i will create a new channel to every <laughs> time that door closes i find another door i get out the asphalt and the pavers i hor i hire the crew and i create an entirely new road and sometimes we have to build bridges but we have to create those new roads when when what we think is safe and comfortable and i deal with this a lot in conversations with my clients when they say well i don't want to step out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. i don't believe in a comfort zone we just have zones we have zones we choose I, i've been uncomfortable every day of my life i have not <laughs> known a day of comfortable there's no such thing yeah there's just the zones what zone am i in today mm. and when i love I think, that idea i love just that zones. idea because if you think there's a comfort zone then 
you know, there's that line, all growth happens outside of your comfort zone. So now you got to push yourself not to be comfortable if you want to grow. But I love the idea. There's just a lot of zones. So which zone are you in today? And do the best you can with it. Yes. And are you really comfortable? Because if you're really comfortable in your zone, you wouldn't have brought me in to help coach you and we wouldn't be having this conversation. Good so clearly the zone you're already in is not comfortable or you wouldn't be reaching out for more tools. Mm -hmm. So let's just take the zones out and let's just be, let's go in it and flow with it and see where there's going to be yeah. shift and opportunity and growth. And maybe things taking away are a great thing. Had that industry not taken away, I wouldn't have known that I could go out and really do it as a recording artist. And fast forward to this past spring to go back to Nashville after 17 years and record my new EP with one of the biggest music producers of all time. And I, wow. and, so and by, I asked cool. by creating that during the time of the pandemic and realizing, okay, we can do this and being careful about when everybody was vaccinated before we could get and do it and all the things that went along with it mm -hmm. and standing in that studio. And I looked at my husband as tears were coming down and I said, Oh my God, I almost missed this. If I had listened yeah. to any negative talk, oh, if I had followed geez. through with the mainstream, mm -hmm. I would have missed one of the most amazing moments of my life. There's these, these bucket list moments, these that I've had Yes. They carry me to the next one to go, well, who am I to not think that that moment isn't going to happen again? Yeah. Once we've had a miracle or a growth moment or something special happen, the problem that we do that's negative is we forget that that's possible again. Yes. And you know what words keep coming to me? The title of Barack Obama's book, The Audacity of Hope. Yes. You know, we all need more audacity of hope. Because that is what, when, when you really think, oh God, how could this ever happen? You know, that's what gives you that oomph to give it a try anyway. Yes. Because I love what you said. Like, what do you have to lose? You aren't there yet. You don't have that. So you're not losing that. But whoa, what might happen what? Exactly. if you dare, if you have the audacity to give it a try? If you, and another thing you did this year, you had the audacity to become an author when you'd never done that before. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Lights, Camera, and Action. Well, clearly we had some free time when quarantine. <laughs> and after I went through all of my celebrity impersonations and, and, and all the outfits <laughs> and just those posts, I realized that I needed to, to do something productive. And here I already was coaching professionals for the last four and a half years while I've been hosting. And I was coaching on site because a guest comes into the studio and the first thing they say is, oh my gosh, is this how I look? Is this how I sound? What should I say? Is this okay? Yes. And I found myself constantly helping people feel comfortable and at peace with what we were going to do in the interview. Mm -hmm. And it just grew into some of them calling me outside of the interview saying, can you help coach me? My coaching program really started organically by seeing the common thread that every professional and every walk of life has that same nerve about being on camera. It's extremely calm, common. And if mm -hmm. I can help them get through that. So COVID happens. Now I'm not in the TV studio. Everything comes to a halt. I'm not right. speaking. I'm not singing. I'm not seeing human beings. <laughs> and I went, what if I put this pen to paper and just wrote out those steps? Mm -hmm. well, what if I pitched it to a publisher? Well, what's the worst case? If they say no, I can self-publish. That's fine. We can. They, there's amazing resources and tools now that we have with our technology. But what if they say yes? And sure enough, we got a yes. Wow. <laughs> and so now we're in full motion, going, okay, wow. It was that boldness again to not be afraid yeah. of the no. Yes. And we got it. it. Doesn't mean I haven't had a million no's. Don't don't get me wrong here. I've had plenty of no's. I just mm -hmm. don't give them any value. I said, okay, well, that's great because I, I that. leap from yes to yes to yes and allow those to become the constant tool belt yes. that is there for me, especially when I hit a low patch to say, mm -hmm. I can shift again. Let's remember all the yeses and let's mm -hmm. get to that good mm -hmm. mindset and do not work in fear. And I love the use of the word shift because, you know, it doesn't sound like pick yourself up, dust yourself off, get back in the game shift. It's like one of the things I like to, to encourage my clients to think of is course correction. 
Yes. You know, like when you're sailing, if the sail starts to luff and it's not working, you just correct your course. You don't lament. You no. don't sit down and cry. You don't give up the sail. You you course correct. And I think that sometimes if we if we frame something that way, it seems so much more doable. Yes. And I love that word shift. It just well, feels more doable. You know, we're driving and let's say we think that the route is going to be great. And we don't realize there's going to be road construction and you get up there and that road is closed and you have to go around. Do we pull over and just leave the car there and never drive again? <laughs> no, you're right. right. You, your course correct. <laughs> and, yeah. and that's the same thing because life is going to keep doing this, especially in today's time. Mm. The difference was that we watched this happen to all of us at the same time. Yes. But how many of us have stories that that's happened to us in little mini increments throughout our life? Mm -hmm. There was just a, a common thread that we watched everybody doing it. And I think we felt everyone's burdens. We felt this tragic yes. tragedy happening as we watched small businesses in our community close down, as we watched what our healthcare workers were going through and what our first responders were going through. But mm -hmm. we still had to look inward and say, but what is my role? What can I do? Yes. Almost survival of the fittest a little bit. And you're right, not just picking mm -hmm. ourselves up, but continuing to stay in motion while we were going through it in the shift. And you know, one of the things that happened to me was a coach had said to me, you know, you got to start doing videos on, on Facebook, you know, you got to just live stream. And I was like, ah, and she said, do 30 videos in 30 days. And I was like, oh my God, are you kidding? Then COVID happened. And I was immediately struck at my deepest levels with like, I have to find a way to remind people every day that there's good stuff going yes. on still yes. that that you know there there is positive experience positive growth that's coming and and positive behavior for a lot of people's coming out of this pandemic so I got this idea even before John Krasinski did his show <laughs> and I started going live stream every morning at 1130. And you know, when I was doing my radio show, every segment was 11 minutes, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So I decided I would do 1130 at 1130. I love and it. I would, of course, you know, there were days when I went, what were you thinking? Because while well, everybody else is hanging out in their sweats, throwing their hair in a ponytail, I had to do the hair and the makeup every day and put yes. something on for camera. Yep, that's but I did 11 minutes and 30 seconds of good news every day. And it, it did, it broke some kind of a barrier for me because after that, live streaming was not a difficult thing. And I realized the power of video. So I think in every tragedy, right, there's always a gift and there's always uh -huh. something positive we can create from it. But we have to remember some of the important things you've said today, Amy, like don't, you know, why not give it a try? Why not? Don't get caught in the fear. Um, step out of the zone you're in. <laughs> we won't call it the comfort zone. And take a shot. Something on your bucket list may end up being the, re the end result. And that's pretty exciting. Very, if, very exciting. If you had told me when we watched the news and watched COVID start that March of 2020, that sitting here at in the fourth quarter of 2021, that now I'm six weeks away from a major book release and a major music release because yeah. of not having the fear to ask for it, because yes. of asking for the help and the resources and the guidance mm -hmm. and the right people to come in and support that and mm -hmm. to help it. And each thing, and again, I think I built it without a band. I think I <laughs> was the same thing again. Right? <laughs> okay, I don't know if we have all the resources for this, but we'll get them as we need them. Right. And that's what's been happening. Once you put that out there and mm -hmm. you walk in that and you own it, the resources we've needed to continue moving this forward and get ready for these releases have come to us right when we've needed it. And it's yes. been beautiful. Doesn't mean there hasn't been stress. Doesn't mean there aren't still pieces missing or things that we need. But when you stop and just, again, launch from yes to yes to yes, stop yes. and see, I can look back and, and I will do a journal to say, what accomplishments took place this week? What did I overcome that I didn't have an answer to on Monday that Friday revealed itself and I can handle? Mm. What things 
was I able to handle and overcome and achieve? And it brings in that sense of pride and that sense of accomplishment and just the sense of well-being and wholeness. Yes. Versus focusing on the on it the other way. Mm, so true. And I think before we end, Amy, one other piece that we haven't touched on, and I know that's important to both of us, is that connection with spirit. Yes. That place inside to where you know you can go, that help that's on a bigger level that we know is out there if we allow it in. What's that been like in your journey? My life verse in, in scripture has always been, he who began a work is faithful to complete it. Remembering that I am always a work in progress. Mm -hmm. I, that, and I will be completed. We don't reach a certain age. Okay, I'm 35, I'm completed, and that's it. And now I just yeah. get, we realizing that through this evol ev evolution of myself, through the ringing out, the refining fire, through all of the things that are there as we evolve, that it is being laid out and taken care of, mm -hmm. even in the hard times. And I yes. think just remembering that foundation and that core and to stop and breathe, to stop and pray, and to just say, okay, we're going to walk this. And even no is an answer. Even no is a yes, because that means it's where you're not supposed to be. Right. And oh. being okay in that. I love that. And that, I think, is a beautiful place for us to end. There's been so much that you've shared today, Amy, that was so important and inspirational and I would suggest to people they listen to this show more than once. But I really want to thank you. And before we end, please tell everyone how they can get your book, how they can find you. Let's give them all the contact info. And of course, it'll all also be in the show notes. Great. Thank you, Paula. This was just such an honor to be with you today. And you change lives every day. And it's just such a treasure to be your friend to be your support and colleague as well and to be here today to hope help others to achieve just maybe a better place go find your zone yes. it's, it's not comfort you can reach me at amyscruggsmedia.com if you google amy scruggs it's going to come up amyscruggsmedia.com all the information is there all the links all the access the, the links to social media you can find me everywhere through that handle of amy scruggs or amy scruggs media and i look forward to hearing reach out i answer my messages Beautiful. And Lights, Camera, Action is available on Amazon. I know. Yes. <laughs> and I will be doing my Amazon review of that book this week. That's my promise. <laughs> I, All right, I, darling. I love you. Thank you, thank you for you gracing too. my show with your beautiful presence. I'll see you soon. And to our listeners, thank you for being here. Please share this show. And let us know with likes and with sharing and subscribing that you'd like to hear more of this kind of inspirational talk and just down-to-earth, wise information from some great people. Let us know that here at Change It Up Radio. All right, we'll see you next week on Change It Up Radio. Bye-bye. Thanks, Amy.